from a you lot of You did hear it first. I don't care what you say. You <laughs> did hear it first. <laughs> Jodie Juno's back in England and here at the new look Newcastle United Media Centre next to the training ground where we have been speaking to Eddie Howe and Bruno Gimaraish ahead of morning, the everyone. Seller Weekend. Uh, Just uh, as Eddie Howe started his press conference, Newcastle announced a summer signing, Willis Sula joining yeah. from Sheffield United. So it's been a busy morning, Jordan. And just first of all, what are your thoughts on this new little media centre we're no, being tread to? It's, uh, it's lovely. Really, really nice. Um, they went Man City style backdrop in terms of the electronic screen. I, I think it's brilliant. Eh? You're all mic'd up now, so there's no hiding from silly <laughs> poor questions, which um, I can't promise that'll change. But um, yeah, the the, the rumours, um, I'm really, really impressed by it. It's a big upgrade on uh, the previous room, which I'm sure yes. the club would admit as well. It was it was a multi purpose facility the the previous room <laughs> where you'd have you'd finish your press conference at how and then you would have the ground staff coming in with a, a the coffee lunches, break, yeah, yeah. but this is very much a, a media room and Dedicated. very 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 impressed by it um see the desk there you call it it's, it's very Proper. much very much similar to the st james's yeah, part it one is, isn't yeah. it it is yeah mike's a uh, nice backdrop so no 10 out of 10 from the, uh, for Newcastle mm. United. Well, then, 8 out of 10 for me. I think the Wi-Fi needs improving and there's no, no air con, so I still feel like I'm in Japan. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a work in progress. And, yeah, really good gesture from the club. And they'll probably like it too. Eddie Howell will like it because we're not watching his training as yeah, we come yeah, out. We're yeah. definitely off-site now. Well, and we never got his training, really, but I think he no, would, I think he, it was it was worried that we would block training. Yes. We never ever did. Well, there was honest. times where I did a live stream once and I saw Callum Wilson mm, doing okay. his, when he was right. had his pectoral injury and I was like, oh, Callum Wilson's there. So none of that. None, none, of, that none of that anymore. So, Jordi Journal's injury training ground exclusives, <laughs> unfortunately. We rarely got them anyway. But. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, where do you want to start? I guess start with Willisula. Yeah, we'll start with Willisula, yeah. Uh, yeah, announced nine o'clock on the dot just as Eddie Howe and Bruno Gimaraes walk into the, the room. So Clever. Yeah, Whilst the TVs and radio did their questions, it was, I'd imagine you in the same boat, Webin, Willa Sula. Um, Thankfully, it wasn't a shock signing. We knew, no, we, no, you, we were knew well it prepared. Happen, yeah. um, it's been, th it's been for done this, for the last 24 hours or whatever. So, yeah, yeah um, Eddie Howe was asked about, asked about him and, I mean, you asked a question on whether Sula, so we should probably, we should probably go to that really. Cause he's, he's the Chris Wood replacement we've been waiting 18 months for, which... Is massive. I think a big point Eddie Howe made actually. There's probably not two better strikers at the same football club as a young striker coming in to learn from than Callum Wills, Wilson yeah, and absolutely. Alexander Isak in terms of when they're fit, their experience, their quality as well. If you're a 21 year old guy still looking to make his way in the Premier League, I think a Premier League proven quality strikers. I don't think another club in the Premier League really yeah. has two goal scorers at the level. Callum Wilson and Alexander Isak are at, as long as they stay fit, of course, which yeah. Alexander Isak currently is. Callum Wilson still probably a couple of weeks away by the sounds of it. Will he miss Bournemouth again? I don't know. I think he will. Yeah, yeah I think he will. He, he's still yet to play Bournemouth in the Premier League, which I know, is yeah. incredible. I know. But yeah, Willis Ula, good, good addition to bolster Newcastle squad. I don't think he's in serious. That's the one thing of the transfer window so far. Other than, I guess, maybe Lloyd Kelly, they've made... What, five signings five now. Signs, probably one of them's a, a, a start, I feel like, or a first and even then it's or. debatable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because like Kelly does F definitely isn't a show in for a start eleven when you've got uh, Dan Byrne who was in fine form the back end last season. Obviously, you're gonna have Sven Botman to come back eventually, so there's a lot of competition on that left. On He's that not left in Newcastle's side. strongest eleven. As no, I wouldn't see. Stand, I wouldn't. I wouldn't see if was. everyone's fit. And then you've got the left back as well, where Lewis Hall is. And shown in pre season yeah, has came been, into his own, yeah, exactly. So it's, um, yeah, they've signed made five signings, but I think we're yet to really see a read statement. I've yes. bashed my hands there, come on, a, sta like a, a statement signing, but hopefully that will arrive eventually. Obviously, the, the, the links around Mark Gay, you know, we addressed this on the, on the last video. I still think there's a lot of work to do for that to happen, and um, but obviously, to play like the are chasing and sign a player like that would be someone who probably does all. Walk into the, I say that actually. He, does he walk in the team? I think he does eventually. I think it, you pay you pay you pay lots of money for him. He's probably a player that gets in most of the top teams at start eleven. But 
as I've said, Fabian Shea. Fabian Shea, he's got to yeah. get Fabian Shea out of the team. And then I know he can play on the left-hand side of uh, defence, but then as I mentioned there, you've got lots of bodies there. So, But yeah, I'm waffling here, but the, the, you, well, just, you, need, you need a signing, uh, you need a big signing, a statement signing. It doesn't yes. feel like they've quite had that yet. No, no. They've bolstered certain areas of the squad without really improving the start in 11, which an argument could be made that's what happened last summer with the exception of Sandro Tonali, but then yeah. there was a debate how does he fit into the team? And uh, that was a player Bruno actually spoke about. Looking forward to working with him again. Eddie Howe was obviously asked about Mark Gahey, as you'd expect. He said, no update. Zilch. Aye, absolutely zilch. Uh, was, I got a tweet through saying, oh, can you ask about the right uh, right forward and a uh, centre-back? And I said, I can't ask, but we know. Yeah, we ask the questions a lot. Or here, Eddie Howe asked the questions a lot. And 90% of the time, we're have a fairly good idea what yeah. Eddie Howe's going to say. So asking Eddie Howe, are you looking to sign a right winger? We'll get the answer. We're looking to strengthen all areas. Uh, I wouldn't want to comment on a specific position. He, he did get pushed on a on a on a, the centre back position um, with the injuries to Lascelles and and Bottom and shout out and Miles Stoffer for that question. Yes, um, but Eddie being the man that he is, answered the question, but cleverly skirted around it, shall we say? So, yes. Um, Signings, yeah, that's should move on. From yeah, the, I think the big takeaway from the press conference is something we manifested on this channel. I think we did, yeah. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll, not we'll, to not to pat we'll, ourselves on the back, we'll love doing it though. We'll love you, patting ourselves on the back, but you did of this hear channel. it first. I don't care what you say, you <laughs> did hear it first. Probably a decision already sort of internally made when we um spoke about it last week in Japan. But Bruno Gimaraes, the fifth. Fifth member of Newcastle's leadership group, replacing that outgoing match Richie. Yeah, I mean it's um as you mentioned there, it's a really positive move, no brain as we said on the last video, I think it was, or the video before. Just a just a, a, a leader both on and off the pitch, I'd imagine. I think certainly on the pitch, um it's been for all, all to see. He leads by example in terms of his playing style. He is the one of Newcastle's well it's a, it's a bit, debate between Alexander Isaac and Bruno Gimaraes for who's the who's the best, but both obviously equally important. And just yeah, it's just a really positive move and one that doesn't surprise me at all. Speaking of Bruno, there, he's, I think he was sort of relishing it as well. So yeah. he's, he's like a, a he, he described it as a a big challenge when I asked him about it. Mm. Um, just yeah, seems to really want to take the challenge on. And as I say, I think I don't think there's many players better suited to. To do it, um, you mentioned he had experience of sort of captaining teams before, or being a leader before, where it was um, in the club in Brazil, Atlético pa- Paranaense. Yes, which uh, he mentioned he'd captained there, and then it was Brazil in the twenties, I think it was. Mm. Um, he'd had experience of doing it at, at Leon, yeah, so he's yeah, he's got. I mean, you don't need to explain why he is uh, being appointed in the leadership group. It's all for, it's there for everyone to see. It's a to say it's an absolute no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Leader by example and an ever present member of the squad when when fit, which he usually is. Isn't Six, 65 games last season, you ask him? 64, but 64. then he's obviously played the friendly game. So I said, You've played 65 games since the start of last pre season. And he's like, Yeah, I don't really know how I do it, but I'm working hard with the club staff. Obviously, he has his own personal trainers, nutritionists, team working behind him. And for all of Newcastle's injury problems last season, Bruno staying fit actually probably stopped Newcastle's season derailing completely because I think without yeah, him yeah. in the side, I don't... I, I fear to think where well, would there's, have there's, there's a stat when, since Bruno made his full debut, every time he's missed, Newcastle haven't won. Yes. Yeah, so that, I mean... There's a ball mouth last year he must have missed. Yeah. Of that was in the one game he missed due to yeah. suspension. And probably doesn't get enough credit for going something like 11 games without getting... Another um, yellow card, yeah. which he was on nine for since January. And to, it was incredible. It was, it was, a, man, it was a Man City game at all. Yeah, and it was to... like, right, well, that suspension's coming. Eddie Howe even said, look, we yeah. expect it. Um, and yeah, Bruno somehow just managed to do it. So I think his, his qualities, everyone knows his technical ability, but I think his ability to stay fit and maintain such a high level of performance is maybe sometimes overlooked and is probably one of his best qualities and makes him... Sort of a standout leader in Newcastle's group as well. Yeah, a very uh, a very strong group, shall we say, of leaders. Of Dan Byrne is, uh, I think, mostly heads it up, to be honest. Um, and Jamal has a sort of absence at the minute because obviously he's recovering from a, 
from an injury, but then of course you've got you know seasoned pros like Callum Wilson and Kieran Trippier as well, which I think we should come on we'll to come Kieran on Trippier. To Kieran, yeah. um, he's back. He's back, yeah. Anthony Gordon's yeah, before that obviously uh, Anthony Gordon, Eddie House said he's trained absolutely uh, he's been great since he came back. Really good attitude, so you know, hopefully that's the the response and signs that you need to know that uh, the talk of going to Liverpool a couple months ago is well and truly over and you know can go and get his head down and look to uh, have a very another successful season here but although he was sort of sure on Anthony Gordon I think he left the Dortmund uh, Kieran Trippier's exit yes I, I think a comment he said he doesn't think Kieran Trippier is actively looking to leave the club or words to that effect and I think he, he did so he he didn't shut it down is all no I'd no say. that's I mean yeah he had um, an opportunity to shut it down but he also said to some degree every player because of PSR the club have to yeah. can't just absolutely rule out the sale of any player and he was asked directly does that mean Bruno Alexander Isak you, you, Anthony Gordon does that put them off limits and he didn't quite go all in and, and deny that either so yeah yeah, it's it's just in the world of PSR, everyone will have a price, as Davin Neal said. Yeah. And I think Kieran Trippier is one of those where Eddie Howe had a chance to sort of pour cold, cold water on his future, but he simply couldn't. And we know why, because yeah. Kieran Trippier's future is uncertain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's been a few times now when even when we spoke to uh, Eddie Howe in Tokyo, he, he's saying he expects departures. He said that a couple of times. It has, there has to be. Yeah, there has to be, which... Previously, sort of, if you ask him about departure, he's like, "Yeah, I want to keep the, I want to keep the squad." And look, I don't doubt that he would like to keep the squad together, but he would never ever talk about the possibility of, of someone leaving. But I think this summer he's been fairly open that will be departures, and look who who that who that will be remains to be seen. But the, there's a lot of players with question marks over, over their heads, over their futures. I didn't didn't, didn't see it right there, but you get what I mean. Mm. Where there's a Kieran Trippier yeah, as one of them, Callum Wilson as one of them as well, but by the looks it will probably stay put now to be honest, given that they've, you know, went and signed up with a Suda I will imagine will be sort of third choice as you mentioned replacing Chris Wood and then I think the big one is probably uh, Almron. Almron still still question marks over his future. I think um Eddie Howe was asked about Almron and I think it was after Hull, I think it was, and you know, spoke about really looking forward to working again but didn't shut out the possibility of him leaving either. So yeah, there's there's a lot of players in the squad who it has question marks over their heads and may indeed may indeed leave, but you know time will tell on on that one. I think. What's it now? Three weeks left the transfer window. Yeah, More. and Newcastle's squad, I believe, is above the twenty-five man limit if you include all the. And you, st- you still need two glaringly obvious signs, in my opinion, in the centre half. Exactly. So in a right forward, there has to be at least at least three senior departures uh, this in the next few weeks. And yeah, Willis Ula comes in, doesn't take up a place in that 25-man squad, which is a bonus. Yeah. Lewis Hall, who's been brought in, doesn't do that either. So there's bonuses to what who Newcastle have signed this summer. But yeah, they are, you imagine, say, a Martin Dubravka would, would exit that and then yeah, you've, up, yeah. you've got a goalkeeper. Uh, I say spot free, they've already got five. So Six, yeah. in, six in Japan. Yeah, do you name five goalkeepers no. in your Premier League squad? I think that's silly. Well, if do you if, name if, four, if you name if you name uh, if you name four or five goalkeepers in your Premier League squad, something's terribly gone wrong <laughs> in terms of not being able to get players in. Yeah, um, as you mentioned about the, the numbers being over. If you spoke at, we spoke at the start of the video, they haven't actually went out and signed an out and out starter yet. So they're going to have to do that within the next few weeks. Otherwise, I think there'll be a few disappointed. Supporters. I know, because one thing that we've spoken to Davin Eels about, Bruno mentioned it again today, a quite consistent message. Eddie Howe's even touched upon it as well. Champions League football. That's mm. Newcastle have often been that- often been coy on what their real targets are. And but I think after achieving Champions League football pro- probably unexpectedly two seasons ago, that's now after missing out on Europe last season. It's now Champions League. Their heads yeah, yeah. are geared towards Champions League, and Bruno mentioned it again today. Yeah, I mean, I think because they didn't get European qualification last season, I think that almost puts a pressure on a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. From speaking to Darren Eels and when he addressed the media 
Um, was it a few weeks ago now before we spoke in Tokyo? Yeah. It was yeah. on the, uh, the the Monday, I think it was, over uh, over Zoom or whatever. It was a different platform. It's anyway, when he was in Germany, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it was the message was consistent. Well, they want to be back playing Europe. And then he speak to Bruno the other day who say, I want to play Champions League again. And then it was actually put at his house saying, look, I've, everyone was speaking at the club saying they want to be in the Champions League, you want to play European football. You know, how do you feel about that? And I think you almost, I think Eddie Howe from skirting around the prospect of European football is almost in a position now where he has to, has to admit that it's a name. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Cameo from fellow yeah, YouTuber yeah, Keith Downing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm listening to what you're saying first. And you're not <laughs> we don't speak sense. So, yeah, um, what do you want to move on to? I under think under pressure now, we've got an yeah, audience. I'm not, I'm not sure what else we're there. Well, the one no. thing that didn't really get touched on, you see the advertising boards there. It's the yeah. seller weekend, there, Jordan. Yeah, that's something. Talking big. about Champions League, Champions League opponents <laughs> are coming <laughs> to St. James's Park in the form of Girona and Brest. We've gone mm. on the record on this channel a few times. and uh, Some big sponsors, though. Yeah. We'll a read few, them out, though. A few new sponsors, MSC, shipping company, Konami, if you play Pro Evo, yes. you'll know what they're all about. Um, and Banco, which are an Italian bank. So three new sponsors, in addition to Seller Noon, Fun88, Adidas, of course, on the advertising board. So yeah, a few new deals. No Visit Malta. No, I was going to say, it's Trump's, Trump's Visit Malta, doesn't it? I know, I know. I spoke to Peter, Peter Silverstone about that in um, Tokyo. Tokyo. And, and he said... Look, it's it's very unusual to have two sponsors in terms of Visit Malta and Seller. He said, Seller are the sponsors, and then we've got the added uh, sponsorships in the pipeline as well. But yeah, talking about Seller and the Seller Weekender, today is the launch of the St. James' staff. So that's that's positive. Liam, Ke Liam Kennedy will yeah, be I was going to say, you're not going. No. no. We're too busy, man. Yeah, too, too busy. busy. Too to busy get doing. free food, drink, and uh, enjoy. Yeah, I mean, new fan zone. It doesn't take me long. It doesn't take much to convince me to go. But we, yeah, we are busy today with Eddie this press. Yeah, this press conference. There's this lot, video. There's a lot of guys for yeah, this video, of course, as well. So, yeah, we're open tonight. Is it open tonight? Or is it open? Well, this is the grand opening, and yeah. then tomorrow for the Girona game. You looking forward to that? Back at St <laughs> James's Park. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've we've brushed over the fact. I mean, Liam has been very vocal on the fact who who are Girona, who are Brett, um, Brett. Champions League opposition. But yeah, it's going to be nice to be back at St James's Park at the very least. No, yeah, absolutely. It's been a long time. When was last time we played on the pitch? Since we played, since yeah. Liam scored a goal at St James's Park. So, who is it? <laughs> Girona. Girona. <laughs> Girona. <laughs> I'm not prepared for this video now. Um, it's a good yeah. test. Eddie Howell yeah. play two, two different, different elevens. Levels. It's the final test really before the start of the Premier League season on August seventeenth against Southampton. So yeah. it will be good to see. It will. I. We don't know who, which players are going to be playing when. Never no. tells us. Well, on the injury front, <clears throat> Eddie Howe ruled out Callum Wilson, Matt Target, but they're the closest two to returning. So that was as much of an injury update as we got from Eddie Howe. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. I'm going to wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, we'll be back at St James's Park tomorrow evening then. So we'll have another video to come from there. And we'll be back as a threesome. Oh, it's been nice. It's been too many videos, just us two. Yeah. Not that I'm complaining. Like <laughs> It's nice to get a word in, isn't it? So. <laughs> oh, poor Liam. Aye. I know, he's been, he's been battered. Hasn't he? <laughs> if you've got anything to say, say it now, because you won't get to say it. Exactly, tomorrow. yeah. I mean, <laughs> Liam's going to make amends for nah. his uh, lack of... Being in Tokyo, you'll be speaking. Yeah, we'll let him do it though. I, I'm running out of things to say on these yeah, videos, exactly. to be honest. It's always descending to waffling. Yeah. Which it has. It has. Right. If you like what we do, please like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell as well for to get the latest videos directly to you, your device. And um, we've got a little thanks button at the bottom as well. Um, there was lots of you who donated for uh, our Tokyo videos, yes. which was which is absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. That really is um, absolutely appreciated. If you want to do it, please do. As I say, it goes back into the pot to improve our channel. Um, get us our new mic, which has worked yeah, wonders. Happened, yes. we've got the... Need a new tripod now. That's the yeah, that's, big that's, thing. Yeah, because this is... It's a bit wonky. Yeah, your <laughs> was, bag's resting on there. Yes. It's cool though. It was on your face when we were in Japan, wasn't it? Yeah, the, it was, the, yeah, the shadow. Yeah, the shadow. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you back. Of course.
Oh, so Four course, Rivers, course. you can't forget yes, this. I'm glad you're Four here. Rivers, financial planning for all your holistic financial needs, pension, all that advice financially that you may need. So we'll wrap it up there. And we'll see you at St. James's Park tomorrow, joined by Liam Kennedy for the first of two friendly games at, as part of the Cellar Weekender against Girona. See you there.